again everyone, it's Jill. I'm going to run through today some lower body and upper body moves just to uh, get everybody moving. Resistance work is very good for our bones, so uh, we're going to have a go at that. So I'm just going to do a little warm up just to get myself in the mood for doing anything. I'm going to walk on the floor. No shoes today because last time they were a little bit noisy, weren't they? I'm going to come up on my toes and back down, up on my toes and back down. You can always hold on if you find that a bit difficult to do. And then I'm going to take a swing down, arms up, and go as low as you want to, just to get everything pumping a little bit more before we start our work. And let's just do a couple more. You can take as long as you like over the warm-up. I'm going to keep it a bit short today. There we go. Right, so the first move I'm going to do is a, a, a plain old squat. Before I had a chair behind me, it's imagining you're going to sit down in a chair. Obviously, I haven't got a chair behind me, so I'm going to be careful. Don't let the knees go past the toes. I'm going to push our bottoms back, pull our tummies in to support that back, and just go again, reasonably low down, straight down and straight up, lovely and tall. So as you come up, you're leading up through that head, shoulders relaxed, I'm going to take a little lunge. I'm going to turn slightly sideways so you can see what I'm doing. Foot in front, right foot, left foot behind me. I'm going to leave that foot on the ball of the foot. I don't want you to flatten back onto the whole foot. And when I go down, up, some puppy bones might happen. You can always hang on to something if you need to. When you come up, you really want to straighten both knees. Don't rock backwards and forwards. So you're not trying to push forward or go down and come back with a flat foot. You're going to stay over lifted heel. Couple more just to show you what we're doing. And we finish there. Let's take it back to the front so you can see me a little bit better. I'm going to turn my feet out about 10 to 2. Tuck your tail in. Now, with the ordinary squat, you stuck your bottom right out. With this one, you don't. You keep it right tucked underneath you because those knees aren't going to go past those toes on this particular move. So we're doing it like that. Straight through. Evenly push through both knees and go again as low as you feel comfortable with. You might only do a little one. You might go a little bit lower. So do what you feel comfortable with. A couple more of these. Coming up lovely and tall, just as before, Tommy is supporting that spine. And then we rest. We're going to just do that left foot forward lunge. That's the order I'm going to do that again in a minute. So keeping that back heel lifted, keeping hands on hips. You can hold on to something if you feel you need to. Just aim to go straight down, straight back up again. You're not rocking forward and back at all. It's a real piston movement, really good for those muscles at the tops of the legs. And the glutes, of course, which are really important to balance. And last one. So, those four moves, squats, PA squats and lunges on either leg, are really good. As you can hear, I'm already a little bit out of breath. And it just gets everything really good, really good to work those muscles there. So we're going to do that again. Only this time I'm going to put some weights. You could just repeat the set and not use weights, but I'm going to put some arm movements in and give you as well. So for my plain squat, where my bottom's going to pull back as if I'm going to sit down, and that protects my knees because they don't go past my toes, I'm going to do some forward arm raises. Keep your backs nice and straight, pull in those tummies. Head in line with the back. Down we go. I'm going to change the pattern. So we're going to go down in two and up in two. A little bit slower. That means we're going to work those muscles out a little bit harder. There we go. Here we come. So count two and one, two, three. Okay, let's do that last time. And now we're going to go down in three counts. Three, two, one. We're going to come up here. Three, two, and one, and come straight up, nice and tall. Pull those tummies in. And come up, and one more like that. You can, of course, always do it the other way, which is to go down one, and up in three. And that just means, that's the slowing down of that move. Just means you're letting those muscles work really a bit harder. Last one. And then, of course, you can always just stay there. And pulse. So we're going to go down, hold it there, and put my hands on my hips for this bit, and just stay here and go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and slow. Up. Good. How are we feeling? Hopefully okay. Let's 
do our lunges. Right foot forward, left foot behind the back heel lifted. I'm going to do a little bicep curl on this one. Tucking my elbow right into my waist, bringing my palms facing upwards. And I'm going to just use those arms as I go down. They're going to come up to my shoulder. Just a nice smooth little move. And this is working those biceps in position. Glutes. Keep the tummies in, keep the backs nice and tall, concentrate on the move. And I've already forgotten how many we've done, I'm just going to do another couple. And what you can do with these, all these moves, is not about how many you do. You might only want to start off with four, you might want to start off with eight. But you can just build up, you don't have to do thousands of them at a time, but build up the number of sets you do. And again, with the weight, you don't want to make them too heavy, but you are going to do them a few times through. Let's take our feet back into our plie squats. So we're now going to do the side arm raises. So as the knees go up to the side, the arms can lift and they can come back as you straighten up again. Bring the arms a little bit more in front of you if you want. Don't let the back curl hold you to that. Keep it nice, strong back. Down we go. We're going to do that pattern that we did earlier. So we're going to go down to two. Make it smooth. Don't sort of drop down on the first count and stay there for the second count. Make the two counts actually while you're moving. And then you're going to come back up again. So it's always smooth and consistent. One more of those. And then we come up. Let's go down to three. Three, two, one. And pop it back. Three, two, one. So everything's a little bit slower, making those muscles work a little bit harder. We're going to do one more like that. And then we're going to go down in one. Up in three. And down. Up three. And if you can put some music on the radio, it really helps just to keep you thinking, this is okay. And rest. We ought to do our little squats too, our little pulses with this one. So hands on hips. Go down into your plie squat. Eight, seven, six. Up, lovely. Let's go for the other side. Left foot forward, right heel lifted. Still with those uh, bicep curls. This time, instead of having the arms coming straight up, you could just turn out the shoulder blades a little bit more so that when the hands come up, they come up to the edges of the shoulders. Try and get them off a little bit differently. So down we go. Did you hear the creaking knees then? <sighs> Three, and two, and last one. Brilliant. Okay, now, very simple. Those three moves, four moves for getting the legs and lower body working. Just to add to the work we've done with the arms, you can always take those front raises, side raises, bicep curls, just without any lower body work, and just do them away. But I'm going to add in a couple of other things for the upper body too. Tommy's in and bottom's tucked under. And arms here. We're going to do an upright row. So we're bringing the hands up towards the chin, only just under the chin. You don't want to sort of cover your mouth, especially if you've got weight. You want to be careful you don't bash your chin. Lead with the elbows. And imagine you're doing like a zip up a coat or something. So keep their bottoms in, tummies in, backs tall, heads level, and rest. So that's really nice. Take the hands to the shoulders. Now, if you've got a problem with shoulders, you might want to keep the arms going here. If you feel you can take them a little bit further overhead, then do. Okay, it's entirely up to you. You can switch between the two types of moves. I'm going to take mine a little bit overhead. I'm not going up here, okay? I'm going to take it forward a bit. If I can turn sideways, you can see it's about 45 degrees, isn't it? I can still see those weights at the corner of my eyes, the top of my eye range. And when I rub it back, two options. I can row it back to there or I can row it back a bit more. So it's up to you how much of a squeeze you put into those shoulder blades. I'm alternating between two different types at the moment. And if you were doing it just at that level, keep those elbows raised. Give those shoulder blades a squeeze as you look back. One more. And rest. Great. Let's take our pet deck move. Great for supporting those chest muscles. We're going to bring the elbows and arms 
into the centre in front of us. So we're stretching out those backs, opening out those chests. Be careful, you don't cuckoo clock your head, you don't stick your tail out, have everything pulled in lovely and tight. Lift those arms up in there. Now if you find that too hard of weight, do it without the weights. But try to get those elbows to come in. So that you sort of touch that last one. And pop those arms down. One more thing, we're going to take our arms up in a big move and bring them down. Up we come and down. Up, through, up, and through. I want to just quickly run through those again. I remember them correctly myself. I'm just going to add a little bit of variation to it. So if you remember that first one was the upright row. What we can do is come up on the toes at the same time. So we're really pulling up through that body, pulling those tummies, and let the feet work equally. Try and push up through the ankles equally. And go as high as you can. I mean, bare feet today is a little bit easier, but if you find working on the floor like the hard one I've got here, difficulty with bare feet, by all means, please put some shoes on. And last one. Rest. The overhead push. I could try taking it on one leg. I'm going to do four on one leg, hopefully. If I don't break the balance, pull up through those waists to change the leg. Reach out with those arms. Pull back as much as you can. And rest. What very often happens is that if you try and add something else in, the first bit you're really working on goes a little bit hot. So make sure you're really good at the first move and then add in the little extra modifications as you can. All challenges the brain, challenges the body, all brilliant for you. Uh, the pet deck we had out here. So again, you could take that on one leg. Really challenging to balance that one. Okay. Strengthens up the ankle bones. Really good. Pull up through those waists. you do it. Last one. And there's an extra little thing we could add with that one, which is when you bring those arms together, you could do a little pulse. You could either take the arms to one side and do a little peekaboo pulse there, bring it back, take it the other way. And you'll see that I'm sort of staging it. I'm making it quite deliberate move, so I'm ready to do each particular part of it. And then the last thing is our big reach up. Let's take it up. And bend the knees as you know at the heels. You're going up high, put the heels flat, and then bend the knees. So we're just going to make that a really big move. And that, I promise you, will warm you up and get everything feeling really working hard. Up we go. Last one, see if I can stay balanced and rest. There, I think that will do it for today. Just going to finish with a few stretches to show you we do do those. I can't remember whether we showed them on the last video, but just to go through them again. Hamstring stretch, foot in front of you, could be flat, could be on its heel. Bend the supporting leg, push your bottom back like you did for the squats. Try and keep a nice, clean, straight back. Pull the tummies in. And you're just pushing your bottom back. If you do it sitting on a chair too, trying to get those hamstring muscles feeling just to the point of stretch. You don't want to ever be painful. So that's a hamstring stretch. We're going to take the foot behind us. Heel down, come forward a little bit. Again, that knee doesn't go past the toe. You could be holding on at this point. You're just going to take it forward. Let's take a stretch forward. We're going to push those arms in front of us without pulling the back up. Pull the back down, nice, clean neck and shoulders, and reach the hands out in front of you. Take a stretch forward. And you're looking for that little stretch in the calf and the bend down to the ankle. Let's lift that back heel. I'm going to go into what looks like a squat position again, a lunge position again. So I've got my hip and my knee in line. My body's nice and straight. This is my hip flexor stretch. I'm just going to stay here for a bit. Again, you could be holding on. If you're not feeling much of a stretch over that hip, just lean back a little bit. So I'm going to just stay there. Try and get that stretch. I'm whizzing through these a little bit. You're going to stay in them a little bit longer. And having come up from that one, take your foot if you can. Hold on to Hooker, and just bring my knee 
in line with the other leg. Try not to have it forward, it doesn't work. Bring it here. You can't hold, you can't hold your foot. You don't have to, you just have to work harder at getting that foot out behind you. So I'm going to take my foot to the other leg. Bring that hip and that knee in line. Stand up tall. So we'll tuck the bottom in so we don't have an arched back. And what are we stretching there? We're stretching those muscles down the front of the leg. Help yourselves. Bring that bottom muscle through. Let's just take that on the other side. So we've got a hamstring coming up there. Again, try to push back to the bottom and get those muscles that run from the bottom past the knee. Get our hamstrings, we can push them back and get them to stretch. Really important, our hamstrings. If you're sat a lot, they seize up a little bit. If you've ever sat for a long time, you stand up, try and walk, it gets a bit difficult. We need those really flexible to keep our stride length working like this so we don't go out wobbling small places. Foot behind you, leaning into our upper half stretch. Again, let's take those hands this time behind our back and you can either rest them on your bottom or just lift them a little bit up your back and open up through that chest, pull the neck and shoulders away from each other. Nice long body line there. Leaning forward a little bit. The more you lean forward, the more that hand, that uh, calf stretch is going to work from the hip and back. Again, none of these stretches should be painful. If you start painting, pain you then come out of it. Lift that heel, bend that back knee a little bit, sink down into our, what appears to be our lunge position, and then just get that stretch going on. We want that knee and that hip in line. Not about how low you go, it's about how much of a stretch you can get into these hips. To that one. And I, again, I would suggest staying in that position a little bit longer than I am, because I want to make sure that we tell so we're into that quadricep stretch, quadricep stretch, I should say. This is all of them. I suggested in the name. And again, just hold that position. And let's just finish with a couple of other arm stretches. A little tricep. I haven't done a tricep move particularly. I should have done that, shouldn't I? But we're just going to take a tricep stretch anyway. Point that elbow up at the ceiling as much as you can. Reach the hand down the back. You can manage to put the other hand behind and try and catch hold of it, but you're opening out this shoulder joint as well. And that would be great, but try not to flare through the tummy later. Stick that back into our back. And let's take the other one up, hold it down behind you, and just again try and reach for that. So again, nice movements, they just open you out a bit. If you've been sitting for a lot, for instance, at a computer or something, that's a nice one to open you out. So we did our forward bit. 